Hi guys, it's Jacob Blizzard. I'm a board certified criminal law and criminal appeal specialist attorney. I practice here in Abilene, Texas. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, quick denials in the 1107 writ of habeas corpus process. So uh, what does that mean? Quick denial it means that these are no go claims. It means uh, the Court of Criminal Appeals has either looked at these claims before they've decided that they are not good legally recognized claims in the state of Texas or your case as you have asserted it uh, does not fit into a ground that is recognizable. So important to note here is these are things you do not want to assert in your writ application because they result in quick denials, meaning the Court of Criminal Appeals is going to look at that application ground and they're going to say, nope, that is one that we absolutely are not going to grant. And so quick denial will come usually within a couple of months of filing that writ application. So let's go ahead and talk about those. So if you waived your right to an 1107 uh, writ application as a part of a plea bargain process, note that that is not normal. You normally waive your right to appeal in the plea bargain process, but you do not almost ever waive an 1107 application. So that's going to be very rare to apply to you. If you do, you still can challenge the effectiveness of your representation because you cannot waive something you didn't know was going to apply to you at the time. Another quick denial is your generic non-constitutional, non-fundamental, non-jurisdictional errors. So Think about that. It has to be the has to relate to the Constitution, has to be fundamental, or it has to be jurisdictional. Those are the types of errors recognized in 1107 writ applications, not ordinary errors that may just occur in the process of a trial. Claims based entirely upon the record, meaning it's a record claim. There's nothing that you're asserting outside of the appeal record that would entitle you to relief. In other words, your attorney your appellate attorney could have brought it up on appeal or they did already bring it up on appeal. If you've, if it's already been argued on appeal, unless you've got something new to it, it's not going to work. You can, however, challenge the effectiveness of your appellate attorney if they failed to bring up a ground that was there in the record and they should have brought forward. Appellate court error. You don't agree with what the appellate court said on your direct appeal. Well, there's a process for that. You appeal that to the next court above that court. You can't get there through the writ process. Trial judge oath. There's been some people who've tried this. They've said that, well, that my trial judge didn't take oath in my case, and therefore my entire conviction is without merit. That just doesn't work. The Court of Criminal Appeals does not recognize that as a ground. Improper venue, meaning that uh, there is a situation where your case was brought, say, in Dallas County, and you think your case should have been brought in Tarrant County because the allegations of the offense occurred in a county different than you were prosecuted in. Well, that doesn't matter. That's not a jurisdictional error. That's a venue error, meaning the choice of the trial was different than maybe it should have been, but that doesn't get you there. Then defective indictments. Uh, unless the indictment is so fundamentally defective that it fails to vest the trial court with jurisdiction uh, or fails to allege an offense in general, challenges to the indictment are not going to get you anywhere. Search and seizure. Anything where you're challenging the search and seizure, not going to work. You can challenge the effectiveness of your counsel for failure to bring or properly bring a challenge to the search and seizure of you or your property, but uh, that's it. Trial court errors that were not fundamental, constitutional, or jurisdictional. We already talked about that a little bit. Violations of the Vienna Convention or international treaties, not going to work. BD Trial Act claims, not going to work. Interstate agreement on detainers, not going to work. Statutory violations, unless those statutory violations also rise to the denial of a constitutional right. Disqualified juror typically is not cognizable for a rid of habeas corpus either. Exclusion of a prospective juror, uh, meaning that you wanted a juror off, but that juror managed to be on there. That's not recognized. Uh, an unlawful grant of probation. You got probation and uh, you weren't legally allowed to. Well, you know, too bad. You, you get what you ask for, so you are not able to challenge that. No authority to stack sentences. That's an appellate issue. You're not going to be able to bring that on writ. Failure to not appoint an expert. And if that was 
raised by objection or on direct appeal, then you're not going to be able to bring that up. No sufficiency of the evidence claims, like saying there was not enough evidence to convict you. There can be no evidence claims, but not insufficiency. Sufficiency of the evidence after guilty pleas, grounds that you raised in direct appeal, grounds that you should have raised on direct appeal, forfeited objections that were raised and then waived, prison disciplinary actions, civil rights claims, and ineffective assistance of counsel on the first writ that you filed. You're not entitled to effective assistance of counsel in habeas claims. So there is no ineffective assistance on your first application. Now you're filing a second application to challenge that. Those are going to be quick denials, grounds you want to avoid. So look out for those, focus on other areas. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, just uh, feel free to, to message me or comment below. Thanks.